Hi, I'm Chris Benar from Proof Positive Magic, and I'd like to thank you for purchasing Jim Carmody's Teddy Bear Turmoil. You're going to have a great time performing this effect because it is so easy to do, inherently funny, and will provide at least 10 full minutes of magic and comedy with lots of volunteer interaction, which today's audiences are demanding. Although the workings of this effect are extremely simple, it's imperative that you follow all of the instructions on this DVD. We recommend that you immediately begin charging the bear while watching these instructions and resist the temptation to begin playing with the bear until it's fully charged. With that being said, let's get the bear charging. The bear is powered by a custom designed lithium ion battery pack. Uh, under operation, the battery pack will power the bear for up to three hours of continuous use. The bear is shipped with both the charging port as well as the indicator lights on the outside of the bear. Before attaching the charger to the battery pack, it's important to make sure that the power to the bear is off. If either of these two LEDs are glowing, it indicates that the power is on and you must shut the power off. The power switch is located underneath this black dot, which of course you will remove after you learn its location. In this situation, we can see both of the LEDs are off, so now we attach the charger to the battery pack. When you do so, the charger light will glow a continuous red. Uh, it will continue to glow red until the battery pack is charged, after which the light will change from red to green and the charger will shut off, so there's no need to time it. That's all you need to do to charge the bear, so leave it on the charger while you continue to watch the rest of this video. The body of the bear contains five electromagnets which holds the limbs in place while performing the bear. The transmitter of the remote control is built into the eraser. The activation button is indicated with the sticker which you remove after you receive the unit. When you push the button on the transmitter, it cuts power to a particular electromagnet which allows that particular limb to fail. Under normal use, the battery should last at least a year. However, when it does come time to change, change it in the following way. With a small screwdriver, pull back the felt and carefully remove the transmitter, which is inside the eraser. Next, take a small screwdriver and carefully remove the top cover, and inside you'll find the 12 volt battery. This is available from any electronics or even most stores. It's used in remote controls quite regularly. Place the cover. Place the unit back inside the eraser, and replace the felt, and that's it. Your battery has been replaced. After the bear has been completely charged, uh, this of course is indicated by the green light on the charger being on, and this can take anywhere from a half hour to two hours depending on the current battery condition. Anyway, after the batteries are charged, you're going to remove the charger from the pack, and you're going to turn the power switch to the bear on, which is located underneath this black dot as an indicator, and to do so just push in a downward position towards the bottom of the bear. And of course, when you do this, one or both of the indicator lights will come on. And once you learn the position of the switch, then you can just remove and discard the little black dot. Now, now that the power is on, before we attach the limbs to the bear, we need to get the bear into what I call the home position. And that is so that you have determined the order with which the limbs and the head will fall off. Um, when you are in the home position, uh, the, one of the LEDs will glow green. 
And as you can see currently, we are in the home position. Um, if we weren't, what we're going to want to do is take the remote control and we're going to want to push the button a few times to cycle through until we get the green light glowing. I'm going to, and when you do this, of course, hold the remote a full arm's length away. If you hold it too close, it will not activate the receiver in the bear. So again, holding the remote at an arm's length away, I'm going to push the button a few times and cycle through until the green light glows, just like so. I'm now in the home position and I'm ready to attach the limbs. I want to put the indicator lights and the charging jack inside the bear and seal the bear up, fluff up the seam so it's hidden, and now you're ready to attach the limbs and the head to the bear. Now, of course, there are two legs, two arms, and a head. Now, the legs of the bear, they look like an L, as you can see. And the arms, they have a slight curve to them, as you can see, and there is a right and a left arm. And of course, the head is self-explanatory. Um, the limbs, three of the limbs and the head, have a plunger built into them. And this plunger is there to ensure that the limbs completely fall off of the bear when you activate the remote. One of the legs does not have a plunger built into it. This is the first leg that you will attach to the bear. Now, of course, there's two black discs on the bear that you could attach the leg to. You're going to attach the leg without the plunger to the black disc on the bear that has the plunger. And when you do so, you want to depress this plunger with the felt part of the black disc. And the easiest way to do that is to grab hold of the disc in both the leg and the bear and just push them together. And then I use my fingers to square up or round up the disc so that they are in line. Um, the next thing you want to do is attach the head. And again, you're just going to line up the disc with the electromagnet and depress the plunger. Now, if by chance this head does not stick, it means that you have not completely depressed this plunger on this leg, in which case you would try to reattach them. But you never want to pull the limbs off. If the head did not attach, you want to shut the power off first. This will make the limbs fall off. Turn the power back on and again begin with the leg that does not have the plunger on the leg. Once the leg and the head are on, it doesn't matter the order of the remaining limbs. You put the next leg on, and of course the plunger will be towards the center of the bear. And then you put the two arms on. And again, there is a right and left, and the plungers are going to be in the armpit location of each of the arms. And again, you grab the disc, make sure the plunger is depressed. Make sure the round discs are in line. Take a few minutes to fluff up the seams to hide them. And that's it. Um, you are now ready to load the bear um, inside the box. The toy box is equipped with mirrors on both sides which allow you to choose whatever side you wish to load the bear as well as which side you wish to choose to have the toys loaded for production at the beginning. To install the bear inside the box at the beginning of the performance, start with the ungimmicked bear and place him inside the box so that the head is facing up. Next, take the gimmick bear and place him inside the box face down so that their heads are in line. Push the bear down completely so that the lid can close. When it comes time to produce the bear, grab the bear by the scruff of the neck and pull him completely out of the box. You don't need to be careful with this because the electromagnets are very strong and they will hold.
Uh, this is how you uh, set the bear blind up before the show. Um, before I explain that to you, I do, however, want to mention that you should always store the box with the bear blind in the down position. If you store it when it's set up for the performance, you will form a crease in the blind, which is not good to do. So to set the bear blind, first remove the top piece of molding by pulling straight up and set that aside. Then grasping the top of the bear blind, remove it completely from the toy box. Flip the bear blind around and insert the top edge inside the box behind the whiteboard. Carefully feed it in. When it gets down near the end, where you're close to this edge of this felt, fold the blind and insert the two tabs underneath the side moldings. Then insert the top piece of molding back inside, again going underneath the sides. And that's it. You've now set the bear blind for the performance. During the show, to reveal the bear, you can either grasp both hands and pull down, or if you wish, you can grasp the center and pull down to bring the bear blind into view. To make the bear blind more slick and easier to pull down, it is recommended that you rub some talcum powder into the back of the bear blind. Okay, so let's provide you with a quick rundown for the basic sequence of events when performing a teddy bear turmoil. Um, the gimmick bear is set and is loaded into the back compartment uh, on top of the duplicate bear. And the toys, which you are going to display and joke about, are located in the front compartment. Um, now the toys and gags that you put in here, you can tailor them to the specific um, holiday or occasion. For example, during Halloween, you can show um, a rubber mask, uh, some scary props, or even like Kevin James' um, haunted hand gag. During Christmas, you can use the Santa costume bag trick or the holiday hat effect, etc. You get the picture. Um, okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to bring your helper up on stage and you're going to. Um, open up the box and show them the toys that you had as a child and then you mention that your prized bear that you had as a child is missing. Um, you show the box empty to show them that your prized bear is indeed missing. Um, you revolve the box around and uh, introduce the drawing board. Explain uh, about drawing a picture of a bear on the box and when that happens you're going to um, have your prize bear magically appear. Now, um, it's best for you to start the drawing so that the outcome will resemble a bear. And usually the body head and uh, the snout are all that's required. So I'm going to do that real quick here. Okay. So that's what you start with and then you have your volunteer uh, draw the rest of the bear so they'll end up drawing like the ears and the eyes and arms and the leg like so and after the drawing is complete you um, once again want to show the box empty because several minutes will have passed while the bear was being drawn and you want them to remember that the box is empty. Um, you give the box a spin, open the doors and remove the bear from the box grabbing it by the scruff of the deck. Um, you're then going to take the bear and hand it to your helper. Now when you do so you want to instruct the helper to hold the bear at the sides underneath the arms. Uh, when, do, when you do so it's also a good idea to comment, now hold him tight because he's heavy. Now, when you say this, it prevents the helper from ever uh, making the comment, which, if made, may make uh, the bear seem to be something less than ordinary. Um, to make the remote control uh, easy to operate, uh, there's only one button to push. 
and each time it's pushed a specific body part will fall and the sequence of this is as follows um, push one and the leg falls off push two the other leg falls off push three and both of the arms fall off and the final push push four the head falls off um, after the limbs have fallen off, you want to take the bear back from your helper and place it inside the box. Um, as you do this, it's very important to shut the power off to the bear. Okay. And the reason we do this, it's a good time to mention this, that um, the longer the bear is on, the warmer the electromagnets will become. And for this reason, the bear should be the last effect you preset before beginning your performance. Um, this um, shortens the total time that the unit is on and minimizes the amount of heat produced by the electromagnets. Also, on a full charge, the bear will run uh, for approximately an hour and a half to two hours. Um, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to have the helper pick up the rest of the pieces of the bear and they go inside the box and um, now it's time to restore the bear and uh, at this point the volunteer is always eager to redraw a picture of a bear on the uh, drawing board so we'll just do that real quick mm -hmm. okay and um, after they've finished with the picture of the bear what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn the box to the rear and as you do so you're going to pull down the blind exposing the um, full color picture of the bear and uh, now all you need to do is to revolve the box around again to show that their drawing has of course magically changed into a full color picture of the bear proving of course that it is truly a magic marker now that's pretty much it. The effect is over. All you need to do now is to open the box and uh, have your helper remove the restored bear. And when you do this, again, it's best to open it up, maybe lower the box if they're young so they can reach inside and grab the bear out. And at the same time, show the box to be empty, you know, one last time. And uh, that's about it. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call me at 800-797-8020, extension 21, or my direct line is 248-705-2189. I hope you enjoy. Let's do something else here. I need a volunteer. I need a volunteer from the audience. I need a... I need a, no, someone who's got artistic ability, someone who loves to draw, someone who can use their imagination and transfer that imagination onto paper. Who can do that? Who can do that? Raise your hand. Who can do that? <laughs> There's a young lady over here. Come on down, young lady. Let's give her a big hand, everybody. Come on in. 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 Come